Okay, today we're going to look at the government of the Iroquois as well as uh, some other topics, probably food and shelter. So the Iroquois, as we learned before, lived in present-day New York State, and they were a highly organized group of Native Americans. They were made up of many different tribes, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca, as well as the Tuscarora eventually in the mid-1700s. So the government of the Confederacy was created by two people named Teganawida and Hiawatha. The main purpose was to bring peace between these tribes, bring peace, stop fighting between the tribes, and then together they would be much stronger. And eventually they were the strongest group of Native Americans, and many say on the entire continent of North America, and easily on the East Coast, they were the strongest group. Um, they had a, a set of laws called the Great Law of Peace, and they lived by this law. Their goal was peace. Their goal was harmony between each other and per mutual protection. And some of those features of the Great Law of Peace were that, number one, all Iroquois land was open for use and shared by the five nations. So any land that was controlled by the Mohawk could be used by the Onondaga, or owned by the Seneca could be used by the Cayuga, and vice versa. Now next, women would appoint or remove chiefs or sachems. So this was a matriarchal society where the women had the power. Um, even though the men were chosen to be chiefs, if they wanted to stay in that job or if they wanted to gain that job, they had to do what the women told them to do or suggested. They had to live according to what the women wanted. Also, um, also the line of succession went through the women. So men and women would trace their heritage, trace their history, their family through their mothers. And that's quite different from European um, society. A uh, letter C, each of the five nations would have its own tribal council. So each tribe still stayed individual. They had their own identity. And you could tell who was a Mohawk, who was an Oneida, who was an Onondaga. And they had their own government. But they also would send chiefs to be part of the Grand Council to make decisions for the entire Iroquois nation. So a decision made by the Grand Council had to be unanimously agreed upon before it could become law, which if you have ever been in government or studied it, to have anything be uh, agreed upon unanimously is very difficult. So it had to be a very important decision to be made by the Grand Council, and all, all of the chiefs involved would have to agree. So that shows that these people, the Iroquois together, they were very tightly bound. Uh, after, or also letter F, anyone could speak at the Grand Council, but only one person could speak at a time. In order to speak, you had to be holding the official wampum belt. And the reason for that is it creates order. So these people were very ordered in their way of life, in their business. They had very clear roles on who was in charge, who got to speak, who made decisions. And that made for a society that stood as an example or an emblem to the colonists and to Europeans, and even today to Americans as a group that is, you know, these are people that we should follow, we can learn from, we could, we could certainly better our society based on the Iroquois way of life. The Iroquois government was a representative government in which the chiefs represented the people. And there's the definition of a representative government. It's a government in which the citizens of a society elect or choose the people to run the government for them. Today we live in a representative society where we choose our governors, we choose our senators, our representatives, all the way down to our mayors and highway attendants. We choose them to do a job that we don't end up doing. They make the rules, they make the laws, and we can complain about them, we can support them, we can do whatever we want about them, uh, but in the end, we choose people to make the laws for us and to run the government. So we, our system of government is similar to the Iroquois government. In this picture on the right, you see a meeting of the Grand Council, and sachems are sitting and listening to the speaker. Now, sachems are chiefs. It's the same word, that's their word, our word is chief. 
and the sachems were in charge of making decisions for the Iroquois. On the left, you see a wampum belt. It's made of shells and used to communicate with other people. And what's interesting is that wampum belts were a memory device, a mnemonic device. Well, I don't know if it's mnemonic, but anyway, a memory device. If you look at it and somebody knew the story of what that belt told, it would remind them the story. So on the bottom left here, we see the wampum belt known as the Hiawatha belt. It represents the five tribes of the Iroquois, and it tells the story of how they all came together. Now to us, it looks like four squares and a tree, but to an Iroquois, they could tell you for hours about how Hiawatha brought these five tribes together in with this goal of creating peace, and they're all connected, and in the center is the great tree of peace. So, um, it, so these mnemonic, or these memory devices, these wampum belts, are quite interesting, and for historians to find them, and then to find somebody who knows the stories, it, it's, it's kind of difficult today, because the Iroquois did not have a written language. They were prehistory. They used they used oral history, oral traditions, and storytellers. That was a job of somebody in the tribe, just to know all the stories and to tell them and to pass on their history. All right, let's look at some food of the Iroquois Indians. Now, we'll talk food and roles. So first off, we're going to talk about the ro a couple different roles. Women were responsible for gathering food from the forest and the environment and farming in the fields around the village. So already you know two roles of women, it's gathering and farming. The primary crops grown by women were corn, beans, and squash, and together they're called the Three Sisters. In addition, the Iroquois grew tobacco, which was used for smoking and religious purposes. It was a religious type of plant, rather than today it's a recreational plant. Um, now men were responsible for hunting and fishing in the forest and the environment. And for them, for the men, the deer was the most important animal and they, throughout the entire Iroquois culture, deer was the most important animal. It could be used for just about anything, for clothing, for food, for all the important parts of, uh, of society and survival. The deer meets people's needs. So uh, there we have a list of plants eaten and used by the Iroquois. Number one, corn, beans, and squash, or the three sisters. Number two, tobacco was used for smoking, religious rituals, and healing rituals. Three, nuts, such as acorns or hickory nuts. Berries, like strawberries, blueberries. Roots, garlic and onions. Then fruit, apples, pears, um, etc. Number seven, maple syrup, or maple sap made from maple, whoa, hold on. Maple syrup made from maple sap. Look at all these things here, all these pictures, and you'll see plants that you recognize. And the reason that you recognize them is because, think about it, you live in New York State. You live where the Iroquois lived. And so while today we have pineapples and grapefruit and oranges, those are not native to this area. They do not grow here naturally. Instead, all of these things that the Iroquois used grow here naturally in upstate New York. So uh, you really can live, or, well, you can have the same diet as the Iroquois had because our climate supports it, because they lived right here. So it's kind of interesting when you're thinking of food that the Iroquois ate, just think about food that's native to New York State, that's normal for you to eat, and you'll be correct. In this image, it shows women planting and tending the crops, the three sisters would being those crop, the primary crops, corn, beans, and squash. What's neat about the three is that the corn grows and the beans can grow up the corn, and the squash grows along the ground and it's protected by the corn. And they're all, you know, that's the major reason why these three crops are grown together. They just grow together really well. And the Iroquois relied on farming for about 80% of their diet. So while they hunted, while the men hunted, the women and the, the crop growing was vital to the Iroquois. Some animals eaten by the Iroquois. Number one, deer. Always deer is number one to the Iroquois. 
but also Iroquois ate bear, and they used their their uh, carcasses for blankets, for wraps, for medicine, uh, for fat to store their their food. Uh, they used beaver in trade and for for clothing. They caught all kinds of small animals: rabbit, squirrel, fox. Some large animal that they hunted elk and moose and also buffalo came to right up to the edge of New York State so sometimes they would be lucky to bag a buffalo be a big bag though uh, they also hunted all kinds of birds like turkey duck goose whatever was around and then finally they also fished and they fished bass trout um, anything again anything that you can find here the Iroquois found here and they hunted it if it moved they ate it after they caught it. Now food preparation was the job of the women and women did all kinds of different things to prepare their food so um, and typically the Iroquois ate one large meal in the morning and or in the mid-morning then the rest of the day they were kind of left to their own devices. So on the top left you see a picture of a mortar and pestle that's used to grind corn kernels into corn meal you could eat, the Iroquois used a hollowed out wood uh, or a hollowed out log or stump with a big wooden mallet to grind the corn and that's called a mortar and pestle. They could use a bone, a jawbone to scrape the corn off of a dried ear of corn or they could use a stone mortar and pestle like you see there in the gray. Uh, they used wood for wooden spoons and they used clay to make clay pots to cook in or to store food in. Down on the bottom left, you see a drying rack. The Iroquois used fire and smoke to dry their meat so that they could hold, hold on to it to store it because they didn't have refrigeration. And um, then over in the middle, the bottom middle, you see women gathering maple sap to make maple syrup. Maple syrup was extremely important to the Iroquois because it sweetened their food. They did not grow sugar cane like other, other groups of people. Instead, they used maple sap to make maple syrup. And you can still do that today. I mean, this upstate New York is a huge, huge producer of maple syrup. And chances are some of you even do it yourselves. Over on the right, you see a family offering food to visitors in the longhouse. And we'll talk about the longhouse in a little while. And the longhouse was a huge building where many, many people, up to 50 people, lived. And they slept and ate and grew and experienced. So food was a very important part of Iroquois society.